Okay, out of the scanner. Um, and we've just taken a look at my brain. I didn't want to show it to everybody right away, just in case <laughs> there was a monkey in there with the symbols, which is what I was really worried about. But I'm going to turn you around so you can see, or my, I'm going to turn the camera on so you can see. Joseph is going to take us through a little bit of my brain. So do you want to just like move it around a little bit and give everybody? So sure. This is really cool. Check this out. So the scanner automatically does this kind of reconstruction of the brain uh, in as if it was the head was carved out of wood, but it can't see any hair, uh, which is why Lauren is bald. But you can see the brain in situ, you know, in place here, which is always really fun, including down to the level of things like the lenses in the eyes showing up here. Very cool. You can always adjust. Personally, I find these views easier. Um, should I just give you a tour? Yeah, let's go on a tour. Okay. So in this image here, the, we'll start with the obvious. This is the front of the head. This is the back. And this is your spine. This is your spine coming up um, into the brainstem. Brainstem, evolutionarily sort of an old bit of the brain. It keeps your heart beating, keeps your blood oxygen levels right. It keeps all the chemicals right in your body. You know, does a lot of those kind of fundamental important things. Sometimes people call it the reptile brain because we share it with um, reptiles and fish and birds. We, we just shook our heads at yeah, that. I know. We just were shaking our heads at that one. <laughs> it's true. It's conserved in a lot of species, but it's there in all the mammals as well. So what do you want? <laughs> Behind it is the cerebellum, which is this sort of very beautiful cauliflower-like structure. And I'm just going to move the crosshairs out of the way so that you can see it a little bit better. Um, and the fact that you can see all of those fine branching is is indicative of the fact you were really still in the scanner, which is it's a really beautiful scan that we have. Um, the cerebellum is one of the more structured parts of the brain in terms of has a ton of cells and it's doing a, a lot of things that are really important, but somehow it gets ignored by a lot of people. It's like the cerebellum yeah. is just this sort of putting in the back that nobody pays attention to. See, I was a good student. I was able to stay like very, st it was a great nap. You don't have to be afraid of going in a scanner. It's a great nap. <laughs> And let's see, above that is uh, the neocortex, which is the mammalian part of our brain. And um, we're looking at it from the middle at the moment. So you can also see this big light gray structure, which is the corpus callosum, the largest path of fibers connecting the, the left and the right hemispheres. Um, the corpus callosum is on average slightly denser in women than it is in men, but you can't see that from a scan. And People have made up all sorts of stories about what that means, but the reality is it doesn't seem to have any functional consequences. Denser. We're not saying bigger. <laughs> well, there's, yeah, there's tighter packing of the fibers. And what people think that means is that there are probably more fibers linking the two hemispheres. Yeah. And then there's all sorts of stories that say, well, that means that women use the two hemispheres in conjunction better than men. And that's why men can only do left hemisphere things and women are better at both. And all that's nonsense. Um, but... Battle of the sexes type stuff. <laughs> right. But there is a biological difference that's measurable, not normally on a scan. You would actually need to do a postmortem, so it's going to have to wait. I'd rather stay alive. <laughs> For sure. And if we switch views and move over to this, this would be if we're looking sort of face in and, and cut straight down. So you can see the folds of the brain beautifully. These oh, are the nice. gyri and the sulci are the sort of little valleys. And hopefully what you can see is the gray matter on the outside and then the white matter on the inside. Obviously, they're both gray in this particular image, but one's darker than the other. Um, one of the things that I think surprises a lot of people is just the sheer volume of white matter. Like mm. about 45% of your brain's volume are connections. Yeah. It's quite extraordinary. Um, and then the rest are the actual brain cells, which are the gray matter, which you can see on the cortical surface, but you can also see in deeper structures like here in the basal ganglia. And um, these are the brain cells. These are the, the worker bees that are doing all the hard work. So we, we talk a lot in, in, in terms of neurons, of, you know, 86 billion neurons, trillions of synaptic connections. But when we put it in, we were saying how it was four times around the Earth? Yeah, just the white matter lasts, if you put it end to end, it's about 160,000 kilometers, and you can wrap the Earth four times in that. And we're carrying that around in it's a kilo and a half. Here. Yeah. It's all in here. How crazy. It's amazing. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, one of the things that's stunning, right, is that we're talking about 86 billion cells and 160,000 kilometers of, of wiring. This thing runs on just under 10 watts. 
right? So that is an extraordinary amount of your body's energy. It's almost a quarter of the energy that you spend every day. And that's just to keep your brain functioning. Um, but it's a very dim bulb back <laughs> from the fluorescent. Go to the hardware store, everyone, and go check out what a 10 watt bulb looks like. And yet so much of our energy is going towards the three pounds of meatloaf up there. It's and, you know, I mean, if you think about like supercomputers, mm. the, they are taking somewhere between uh, millions and billions of times as much energy to do quite a bit less. Um, so the efficiency is just astounding. We're yeah. more impressive. We're just more impressive. Okay, Joseph and I are going to keep looking at this. I wanted to give everyone just a uh, a behind the scenes look. By the way, this is the lab. It's not sexy. <laughs> and we're in a basement, so it's not sexy, but this is science. This is how science is done. Um, Joseph, you spent, what, 20 years mm. studying the neurology of language? Yeah, how it is we can years. do this. 20 years. Think about the projects that you're working on right now. I doubt that they're lasting 20 years. So, um, I need anyone who's watching this video right now, we're going to put it up on YouTube, but anyone who's watching this, you got to check out this guy's work. It is so much fun, <laughs> so much fun. And if you are in London and you have the opportunity to attend any of his workshops, you got to go. We're going to link up to, to Joseph's uh, everything, his websites, his fun stuff, his courses, all the things. But thank you so much. Like It's such a pleasure. I'm so glad that you could come and do this today. That's really fun. And yes, we've made him an official pirate. You'll see the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> we are for now.